Hello, welcome to Online Worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I'm Reverend Meredith Manning Brown, our lead pastor, and on behalf of everyone who is helping to lead worship today, we welcome you. We are so glad that you are joining with us today on this beautiful day that God has given us to worship. I want to extend a special welcome to anyone who may be joining with us for the first time in online worship. We're so excited that you are here today, and I want to encourage you and everyone who's joining in worship to use our contact form. The link for that can be found in the header to this uh, worship service and also pinned in the comment section. This is a place that you can put your name and your contact information so that we can be in contact with you, that we can follow up with you, that we can uh, be in touch with you so that we we can send you our e-newsletter with all of the most up-to-date information about everything going on with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church and can connect with you in all of those things. And then there's also a place on that contact form for you to put your prayer requests that go straight to our pastors and to our prayer team. So I encourage you to use that contact form today. Today we are celebrating Holy Communion for all people, so if you have not already done so, I encourage you to gather up some bread or crackers or some kind of baked good that you can use for Holy Communion, and then some juice or some kind of a beverage as well that you'll be able to drink. We'll be celebrating Holy Communion later in the worship service, but go ahead and get those things together. And then when we get together for online worship, we covenant together to participate and to be a blessing. That means when we covenant to participate, that we're really going to participate. This isn't just a random video that you're watching. This is worship that we are doing of God and with one another. So we encourage you to turn off other devices and distractions, to really focus in and to sing when we sing, to pray when we pray, to join with us in communion and fully participate. And then we covenant together to be a blessing. And that means that everything that we're doing together today, the way we're in the comment section, the way we may be gathered with other people, the way we're gathered with people all over the place and that we're sending this worship out into the world, that all of it is a blessing to everyone that is involved. Again, we are so glad that you are here today. Welcome to worship. Hi, I'm Dennis Fry, and this is my daughter Elizabeth Fry, and we are members of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Please receive this call to worship. Come, let us celebrate the forgiving, reconciling love of God. For once we lost and felt so far, far away. away, now we have found and welcome home. Know that God's love is lavished upon you forever. We rejoice, we rejoice in the news, the news of forgiveness, forgiveness and hope. Come, let us celebrate and praise the God of love. Today is the day. Amen. Please join us in singing, Today is the Day.
Good morning, I'm Kay Fisher, and please join me in prayer this morning. Loving God, we worship in your presence today, remembering your unrelenting love and the way you seek out all who feel lost. Sometimes we feel as if we belong in this group, for we have fallen short of who you have created us to be. And yet, we are here with you and one another, confident in your love, praising you for the amazing welcome and grace that you give. Bless this time of worship with your Holy Spirit that we may know and respond to your acceptance. Send us into the world as people who speak and show your amazing love at all times and in all places. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And please join me in sharing the peace of Christ. You can say, peace be with you, and respond, and also with you. Share that in the comments with one another, with me, and with these folks in our church community. Peace be with you. I'm Gabe Woodruff. I'm a member of the Belt Choir, the Praise Band, and Youth Group. Peace be with you. Douglas Avenue. I hope you're having a wonderful Sunday morning. I'm Chantel Corey and I'm the Executive Director at Midwest Mission. We're busy with disaster, but we hope today that you're having a great day. Peace be with you. I'm Jim Bogue. I'm a member of the Handbell Choir and the Chancel Choir. Peace be with you. I'm so excited, it is time for small talk. I want to encourage all the children joining with us in online worship to get in really close to your device, to your screen, so that you can see and hear everything going on with small talk. Our small talk is led by Miss Laurie, our Director of Children and Youth Ministries, and her assistant, Laud the Lamb. We're gonna follow this time with a special blessing for back to school and blessing of our backpacks. So if you wanna pull that together, you should do that now as well. But let's come in really close right now for small talk. Hi, everybody. Uh, we have some distressing news. Look more distressed, please. Yes, Laud the lamb is missing. We have a missing sheep. Yeah, yeah, a missing sheep. We have no idea where he, where he is. We've put flyers out, nothing. But, oh, oh yes, Barry. Barry's kind of a bloodhound, you know? And so he went and he found a lot. This is so exciting. We should throw a party or something, shouldn't we? Because we found him? Or should he be in trouble? Or maybe both? Party and, this reminds me of a parable that Jesus told people. And even though you have still 99 sheep, you worry about the one, right? You worry about the one. And what he was trying to say is you don't just, you don't just minister and do good things for people who are always good because we're all sinners. You worry about everybody, even the sinner. Jesus would eat and talk and visit with people that Normally, people didn't. Yeah. So keep that in mind. None of us are perfect. Right, Lod? Is he happy to be home? Are you tired? I think we're still going to have to talk about this thing, Lod, because really. Have a great day. Thank you so much, Barry. That was very helpful. Have a great day, everybody. See you later. It's our honor at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church to celebrate and pray for all of our students and teachers as they have been returning to school this year to pray for health and safety. And so I invite you, if that's you, to maybe clone in close to your device and to your screen as we have this special time of prayer. And please know that we also have a special gift for you available at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. You can come join with us and pick that up any Sunday at 8.15 or at 10.30 for worship, or just let 
us know in the church office and we'll get that special back to school gift to you. But right now, come on in close and let's have that special time of prayer for our teachers and for our students. And if you have your backpack or your work bag, bring that with you too. Let us pray. Loving God, we find that a new school year is exciting and worrisome all at the same time. But we know that when we are excited and when we are scared, you are with us. We know that whether school is great or hard, you are with us. We ask your blessing on students, teachers, and staff. Strengthen and encourage them as they continue in this new year. Help them to grow as learners and leaders in our schools. Keep them safe and healthy, always confident in you and caring for one another. And we ask your blessing on our backpacks and work bags too. They hold the work of each student and teacher and staff carried from home to school and back again. As these backpacks and work bags are carried, help each one to be reminded of the love and care of their church family that surrounds them each and every school day. We thank you for always being with us. Help us to remember to show our thanks for your gift of learning by doing our very best every day. Amen. And don't forget, we have that special gift for you available at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church for Back to School. Just let us know if you'd like to receive that. Good morning, my name is Reverend Margaret Ann Jessup and I am the Executive Director and Pastor of Wouldn't It Be Lovely. And Douglas Avenue is my church and it's also the home of Wouldn't It Be Lovely. And it is an honor to read scripture for you today. Today's scripture reading is from Luke chapter 15, verses one through 10. Let us open our hearts and our minds to hear what God is saying in this text. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, this fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So Jesus told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulder and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman having 10 silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? When she has found it, she calls together all her friends and neighbors saying, Rejoice with me for I have found the coin that I have lost. Just so, I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. May God bless our hearing and understanding of the Bible reading that we have heard today. Today we're wrapping up our summer long worship series, Stories to Live By. Over 14 weeks, we've had seven different people in our Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church community offer up some of their most cherished stories or verses from the Bible that have been meaningful and helpful to them in their journey of faith. And I am so grateful, grateful for all of these witnesses to God's goodness and leading, for all of the stories and verses that have been lifted, for the hope and grace and vulnerability and growth and laughter and tears that we have shared together. I'm honored to share a very tender Bible story with you today that became a story to live by for me 20 years ago during the week of September 11, 2001, the time of the terrorist attacks on the World Trade Center in New York, the Pentagon in Washington, D.C., and in Sharpsville, Pennsylvania. I was serving in my very first appointment as a United Methodist pastor. I was in Shrewsbury and Worcester, Massachusetts. I had completed a full year of ministry in those communities and was getting started in my second and feeling relieved to have survived that very first year and ready to do, dive into the next one with hopefully a little bit more confidence and know-how. I'd hoped. The morning of September 11th, 2001 dawned clear and crisp and beautiful, just a true New England fall classic. 
My husband, Reverend Curtis Brown, was also an associate pastor at our United Methodist Church in Westboro. And Curtis and I had had coffee early together that morning, and then he and our lead pastor headed out of town together on a day-long retreat with the other clergy in that town, out of range of cell phones to a retreat center. It was my day off, so I had bowed out of that gathering to United Methodist pastors at that one town clergy gathering, seemed to be plenty. And it was also pre-kids in our household, so I was at home preparing for a day of chores and errands, and hopefully I get enough done that I could get some reading in as well. I was on the phone that morning, catching up with one of my dearest friends in the whole world, and we were actually both watching the Today Show on our televisions. We were watching and chatting and catching up and snarking about whatever it was that was on the television. And then all of a sudden, the regular Today Show programming cut away because something was happening in downtown New York City. And very soon, my friend and I were watching footage of a plane flying into one of the World Trade Center towers. And then we watched live as a second plane flew into the second tower of the World Trade Center. We got off the phone. And it just continued. There were the reports and the pictures of the devastation left from a plane crashing into the Pentagon in Washington, D.C., and a, reports of a plane crashing into a field in Sharpsville, Pennsylvania. And I remember praying, God, make it stop. Make it stop. There are planes falling out of the sky. Just please, please, God, make it stop. It shortly became clear that this was not an accident, but an intentional, horrific attack. And my prayers changed. Oh, dear God, what do we do? What, oh Lord, do we do? Oh God, do something. We should do something. And then the realization, oh, that's me. I'm the pastor. So I hit the shower and I got dressed and I headed to the church and we fielded phone calls and prayed with people and talked with people in the midst of all of these overwhelming outpourings of terror and grief. We opened the sanctuary for prayer, planned a community-wide interfaith prayer service for the following evening and the following evening and the following evening. You see, there were all of these folks on that first plane that hit the World Trade Center, people on that flight out of Boston first thing that morning who worked at TJX Corporation, whose corporate offices were in our community. People who lived in Westboro and Northboro and Framingham and the surrounding communities and the loss was devastating. In our church family, there was the retired military officer whose best friend was the pilot of the first plane that crashed into the towers of the World Trade Center. He crawled up the front steps of the church and collapsed in the foyer of the church. There was the young woman who hadn't received a call from her sister, who still hadn't called and then hadn't called and then just never called as she hadn't escaped the second tower's fall in New York. And it went on and on and on. The grief and the pain and complex depths of fear and grief and trauma have stayed with me. And with being a pastor in the midst of all of that, that will, that will be with me for the rest of my life and continue to form and inform my faith and my ministry. In the midst of all of that came the Bible story for the week, uh, for the preaching and worship for Sunday, September 16th. And it was the one assigned by the, uh, by the uh, Revised Common Lectionary, the one we shared today, from Luke chapter 15, verses 1 through 10. Which one of you, having a sheep, and losing one of them does not leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it. 
of what woman having ten silver coins if she loses one of them does not light a lamp and sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it. Seeing all of the flyers posted in New York City, pictures of people with the word lost printed above their faces, all of those faces of all of those lost people, lost lives, lost hopes, lost futures, people lost in grief, people lost in fear, people lost in anger, people lost in anxiety. Oh my God, the anxiety. People lost in previous experiences of loss and pain that this tremendous experience of loss and pain brought back in re-experienced trauma. And here, in the heart of all of this was Luke 15, with the audacious claim that no one ever, ever is lost to God. There is no lamb too small, no coin too unimportant, no child too pushed away, no loved ones swept away in death, no person's body annihilated in the desert of a midtown dust heap. None of it, none of us, none of them are ever lost to God, ever. This is what Christian hope is. We don't hope that everything will be shiny and wonderful because it won't be, and we know that. And Jesus knew that and lived that just like us. There are days and weeks when it seems the world is over and all is finished. And there are days and weeks when we are able to see otherwise, when we are able to see and comprehend the searching and finding love of God in ways big and small. Over these last 20 years, I have, we have all certainly experienced those griefs and joys over and over. And in the midst of it all, we are able to have hope for the future because we know that nothing, nothing is lost or impossible with God. No one is ever lost to God. This is the heart of hope. It's God's promise to us and everyone. It is the good news of love and life itself. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please join us in singing It Is Well With My Soul.
It is time for Holy Communion for all people, so I encourage you, if you have not already done so, to gather up some bread or baked good or crackers, uh, some kind of juice or beverage so that you can participate in Holy Communion with us. Jesus Christ invites everyone to his meal of Holy Communion. Wherever you are and whoever you are, church member or not a church member, with your culture and race, with your age, child, youth, or adult, with your gender identity and sexual orientation, whether you feel lost or found, sitting alone or gathered with others, in the fullness of who you are in whatever state you find yourself today, and wherever you are, you are welcome to participate in this holy meal, however you want to participate today. We're going to continue in our prayers. I invite you to join in the responses as they show up on your screen. We'll also have an opportunity for you to offer your own prayers. You can put those into the comments. You can just pray them aloud. You can share them, of course, with us on the contact form and the prayers there, but uh, we'll have that time for prayer as well. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Loving God, we are so grateful that you have created us in your image, that we are intimately bound together with you, in you, and through you, that even when we break away from you, your love always seeks us out, and you always welcome us home. We thank you for Jesus in whom your abundant hope and never-ending love is made real to us and in us. We are grateful that you feed us and heal us through this communion meal. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that makes the fruit of hope grow in and through us, reviving and strengthening us for work in your world. We offer the prayers of our hearts to you today, merciful God, in full trust and confidence, speaking them aloud, sharing them in the comments, and holding them in our hearts. We pray for all who are sick and suffering, for all who need your healing in body, mind, spirit, and relationship, especially all who are ill with COVID-19, those in the hospital and intensive care units, and all healthcare workers all recovering from giving birth, those who are receiving cancer treatment, all who are struggling with addiction, all who feel lost and separated from relationship with others and with you. We hold close all who are grieving, knowing, loving God, that you enfold them in your care. And as we remember the events of September 11, 2001, this next week, may we honor those who died Give thanks for those who served and saved. Give comfort to those who grieve. And may we seek justice and peace, living out your love when hate seems to reign. We pray for our world, especially for people living in the midst of the reality of war, violence, and natural disaster, especially the people of Afghanistan, the people of New Orleans and South Louisiana in the wake of Hurricane Ida, and in the Northeast United States the people of Haiti, those in the paths of wildfires in the Western United States. We pray for our world and environment, for us to work together to stop global climate change and to care for one another and our planet in this necessary way. We are so grateful to you today for the abundant blessings of our lives for the ways you take what we believe to be lost and create a new way and loving community, for all the ministries of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, for healing and hope, for celebration small and large, and for all the ways we see and experience the love of Jesus each and every day. Merciful God, as we share in this Holy Communion meal on this Labor Day weekend, Bless all who labor at farms and gardens, in trucks and warehouses, in restaurants and food preparation, in stores and on manufacturing floors, at desks and computers, in classrooms and in laboratories and in so many places. We give thanks for all who labor and pray for rest, refreshment, and justice for all whose labor is unrecognized. 
Lord, in your mercy, receive all of our prayers spoken aloud in our hearts and in the comments. I invite you to pick up your, your bread and join with me as we pray. We remember Jesus that after laboring on the streets of Jerusalem, doing justice, loving kindness, and walking humbly with God, that he clutched bread in his hands. He blessed the food, gave thanks, and heartfully expressed to his friends that this was the bread of life. As you eat this bread, remember me, he said. You can put your bread down. And I invite you to pick up your beverage. After supper, Jesus grasped the cup filled with the gifts of the vine. In his blessing, he reminded them, whenever you drink of this cup, remember me. You can put your beverage down. And I invite you to lift up your hands. And so, remembering your acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves as a living sacrifice of love and service intimately bound with Christ's offering for us. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered across geography and time, and pour out your Holy Spirit on the gifts of bread and cup that each of us has brought. Make all of these gifts of bread and cup be for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ, that we may be for the world the living body of Christ, redeemed and empowered by his saving love. You can put your hands down. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Jesus comes again and we feast with him and one another face to face at his heavenly banquet table. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church connected in all places and at all times, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Please join me in praying the prayer Jesus taught us, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs> The bread and juice, the baked goods and beverage that we will eat are a tangible experience of Jesus' transforming grace and love, feeding us, healing us, and changing us from the inside out. I invite you to pick up your piece of bread. Eat and experience that this is Jesus' love for you. And I invite you to pick up your cup. Drink and experience that this is Jesus' love for you. And now please join with me in our prayer of thanks. Eternal God, Thank you for this holy mystery in which you give yourself to us through the bread and cup. Send us from this meal in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning. I'd like to thank you for your generous and dedicated support of the ministries of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. 
during the month of September, you're going to have many opportunities to step up and put your faith into action. And those begin this Saturday between the hours of 9 a.m. and noon when we're going to be having our annual fall cleanup at the DAUMC Community Garden. It has been a great season of growth at the Community Garden with bountiful harvests all over the place. Please join us as we celebrate the fall harvest. Then on Sunday, September 12th, we're going to have the kickoff of our fall ministries at DAUMC. It's going to be an exciting Sunday to be at church as we celebrate the return of some of our small groups to the DAUMC campus. We bless the backpacks and briefcases of our students and our teachers as they enter into a new school year and lift them up into prayer. As we begin Children's Church, which will be returning to DAUMC during the time of the sermon at the 10.30 a.m. worship service. September is also a busy month for the associates of Wouldn't It Be Lovely. On the 17th, they'll be having their fifth annual golf outing at the Edgewood Golf Course in Auburn. And on the 24th, the ladies will celebrate their Little Black Dress Gala here at the Crown Plaza in Springfield and also with online options. These two events have become traditions in our wonderful support of Wouldn't It Be Lovely, and we hope you'll take part. Then on Sunday the 26th, we're going to be celebrating Youth Bible Sunday. We want to make sure that every youth and child in the church, elementary school age and up, receives an age-appropriate youth Bible that they can use at home. If you have a child or youth that you would like to participate in this great tradition of the church, please call the church office this week. On the 27th, we continue our vital conversations on race. You can find all of the information in this week's e-newsletter. And on September 30th, the children of Compass for Kids are going to be returning to the DAUMC campus. We always need volunteers for the Compass program. You can help in person or by providing snacks for the kids. Compass is going to look a little bit different because of the pandemic but it's still a vital ministry, plays such an important role in the lives of these children. Of course, your monetary support of DAUMC is always very much appreciated. Remember, you can give in one of four ways. First of all, you can use our online giving portal. You'll find the QR code right here, as well as a link in the uh, comments to today's worship service. You can call your bank and set up automatic bill pay. You can call Jesse in the church office and he'll help you set up ACH Bank Draft or you can bring your check to church, drop it in one of the offering boxes on Sunday morning during worship or send it into the church office. We hope you will remember the special offering that we are collecting during the month of September to support the activities of UMCOR, the United Methodist Committee on Relief. Whether it is a man-made disaster, a natural disaster, weather, illness, no matter what, UMCOR has boots on the ground serving the most vulnerable among us. And your donations are so important to helping to ensure that they have the presence where it's needed throughout the world. Please consider giving generously. Thank you for all you do in support of the ministries of our church. Please join us in singing, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing.
thank you for joining in online worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. We love you and are just so pleased that you've joined with us in this time and want to encourage you to continue to join in online worship with us, to join with us for worship in the sanctuary on Sunday mornings at 8.15 and 10.30. Know that uh, this next week we start our children's church as well at the 10.30 worship service and everyone is invited to those as well. We continue with our online worship, of course, and I want to encourage you to remember to use that contact form to put your information there so that we can connect with you, that we can help you connect into opportunities for growing in your faith and in your service. And please use that spot there for prayer concerns that go straight to our pastors and to our prayer team. We long to pray with you, so please use that resource so that we can pray with you. And now as you go into your day, go knowing that the God who loves you always finds you. That Jesus Christ, who knows what it is to live our lives, our griefs, our stresses, and our joys, that He is with you, seeking you out and finding you. And that the Holy Spirit goes before you, lighting your way with love and mercy and peace. Go in peace to love and serve your God. Amen.